Seats. Welcome to God's house. We're a time of worship together. Amen. I'd like to read to you just one short verse this morning as our call to worship. This is from the 27th Psalm. God speaking through King David, man after God's own heart. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Join me in prayer, please. Father, because of you, we do not fear. Because of you, we do not dread. Because of you, we live. Because of you, we will live forever. Oh Lord, this is your house, but we want you to know that we issue you a formal invitation today. As you bear witness to what we do through singing and preaching, everything that we do, whether we be behind the pulpit or sitting in a pew, Father, may it be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For it is in the name of your Son, Jesus, that we pray, saying together, Amen. 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 Our first hymn, Love Lifted Me. Someone that you want to lift up in prayer, 
just raise your hand, get my attention, and then I'll call on you and you just say, Dear Father, would you please bless him? Tell him all about it. Can I interrupt you for a minute? Yes. Um, I get ready to pray, and we have prayed and prayed for Sarah, and she is here today. Yeah. Praise God. I, I, all right, I didn't see you. Hey. I, I mean, that's why we pray. Amen. She's a fighter, and yeah. she's loving and she's doing everything she can. I'm just overwhelmed with joy and praising God today. Well, amen. Fantastic. I didn't see you, so I'm glad you said it. It's good to see you, sir. I've only known you by telephone and email for about eight months now. It is good to see you. Well, I think we ought to start off then with uh, giving thanks to God. So we'll have two different parts to this prayer. If there's something you want to give thanks to God for, we'll do that. Then we'll shift gears and lift up people in need. Okay? Let's pray. Look, I'll do it. I'll get it. I'll get it kicked off. This. I'm glad you're eager. <laughs> I'll be looking your way in just about five seconds. Ready? Let's pray. Father, we do want to thank you today. Please hear us as we give thanks. Yes, ma'am. Please lead us. Um, thank you for your prayers for my friend Lisa White. She had her surgery, and she does not have cancer. She's thankful for everyone's prayers, thankful to God most of all, and um, she plans on being back at work in two weeks. Amen. Thank you. Is there anyone else that you would like to lead us in, in giving thanks to God about someone you know or about something that's going on? Yes, honey. Grandma and my, my grandma in Florida. Amen. Any other Thanksgiving? <coughs> All right. How about we lift up people that, that need God's help? Is anybody you want to lead us in prayer for? Yes, Shelby. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else you want to lead us in prayer for today? Anybody needing God's help? Heaven. Please be with our good friend Glenn and help him, Lord, with his back issues. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, saying together, Amen. Amen. Our next hymn, Tell Me the Story of Jesus, number 122 in the hymnal. Will you please stand and sing this together? Tell Me the Story of Jesus, 122. Precious, 
seats, not back in the pew racks, that way she'll know which ones to, to sanitize. And the bulletins that you picked up, please take those home with you. Enough custodial work. More prayer work. Real custodial work. This is our missions prayer time. And this is where we focus on efforts to reach people that we want God to bless. And uh, praying, when we say we want God to bless, and what we're doing, we're praying out of the very heart of God because God wants all people to be saved and know His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's what we're about. That's why we exist as a church. To lead that time, we'll call upon uh, Abby Ridgely to start us. We are in our season of prayer for our North American missionaries and our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. And today, we're going to see a video clip of... Uh, Ryan and Tricia McCormack, and if you, they're, they're listed in our uh, prayer, prayer guide from last week, and they minister in Avondale States, which is close to Atlanta, kind of a suburb of the Atlanta area in Georgia. So we'll watch that clip now and talk a little bit more about them. I really grew up in a very diverse neighborhood, and uh, that that's part of what led me to plant the type of church that we planted here at Basketball Bowl. We wanted to plant a church in a very diverse area to say to our world that there's hope. There is gospel hope through the work of Jesus for a right relationship with God and a right relationship with one another. And we feel like the east side of Atlanta just beautifully represents that. As I was getting prepared to plant Gospel Hope Church, one of my deepest prayers was that the Lord would lead a brother to lead this plant with me. And I was praying for somebody that I would really identify with philosophically and theologically, and God in His grace answered that prayer way beyond my expectation by allowing me to be brought through mutual plant. We got together and had coffee, and just as we began to get to know one another, we came to the conviction that we think we can do this better together than we can at we're on the same mission here. We're on the same team. And we've been able to reach a wide swath of people. And every Sunday, you have this beautiful picture of the diversity of God's kingdom. Absolutely. And people who I think their idea of what it means to win 
has nothing to do with is it my idea or is it his or her idea, but does this idea or does this initiative advance the kingdom? People are black and white and brown and rich and poor and male and female and young and old, but fundamentally, we are all made in the image of God. We are sinners who need a Savior. And we all, if we trust in Jesus, are being brothers and sisters by the work of His blood. And it is, it's, it's one of the most deeply moving experiences of my life to be part of a church that does this play where He's out of the Thank you so much for giving to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Because of partners like you, we are able to plant churches in places that desperately need a gospel witness. So, I have Easter eggs, if any of you would like to take one of those, and what we do is collect change and over the next couple weeks and put them in our Easter eggs, and then we will collect those on Easter Sunday. So, I'll have eggs today if you uh, would like an egg. So, we want to pray for the McCormicks. They do have a few prayer requests uh, that they reach the diverse communities in their area of Atlanta, and for church members to display Christ to reconciling love. So we want to pray for that. But before we pray, a few other things to pray about. Today is our winter carnival. We've been talking about that for weeks. So today's the day. And we're thankful for such a beautiful day. It's supposed to get a little windy. So we'll just pray that that doesn't get too bad. And uh, we're, we'll be starting at 2 o'clock to 3.30 out in the parking lot across the across from the church uh, so stop by even if you're not helping stop by pray visit with some of the people there some of the uh, community people and we'll be out there from 2 to 3 30 and we're continuing with our basketball ministry as Troy is having that I think on Monday night this week is that right <laughs> yes so Monday night from 7 to 9 and Shirley uh, mentioned this to me, and I didn't think to pray for her during our prayer time, but she mentioned Laura last week, that we all know, one of her friends, uh, that she fell and laid through the night. We're not sure how long, but she is in Florida now with her daughter. She's doing good. She'll be there for two more weeks. She did break her wrist but she'll be back then in the area staying with another daughter in about two weeks. So thank you that she's doing well and we do want to pray for her. So let's pray for the McCormicks and our ministries that we have coming up. Dear Lord, we do thank you for this time that we celebrate North American missionaries and for the North American Mission Board as they coordinate all of this money and, and the work that these missionaries do and and everything that goes along with that. I pray for the McCormicks as they're in the Atlanta area. I pray for their church in the diverse communities in Atlanta. Just help them know how to reach out to each community. And in this time of the COVID virus, it's just difficult for everybody to do ministry. So be with them and, and help them uh, think out of the box and, and think of ways to reach out to people and that their, their church also reaches out with Christ's love. And I pray for our ministries coming up. I pray for our carnival today and as we expect a lot of kids and parents and be with us that we have a good time of fellowshipping with them, talking with them, but most of all, Lord, we show them your love and that we can plant seeds of you in them, and through what we do, uh, someone, some of these boys and girls will come to Christ. I lift that up to you. And, and our basketball ministry, be with everyone involved tomorrow night, and, and Troy, as he is, is uh, in charge of, of all of that, just be with him and, and uh, everyone there. And Lord, we do lift Laura up to you and thank you that she's well and we pray for a good recovery. And all these things I lift up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Are there other ministries that you want to lift up in prayer? You know, we have committed that everything that we do as a church is going to have two things. It's going to be bathed in prayer, and it's going to have an intentional presentation of the gospel. 
So I want you to think about things within the church. Even things that you don't normally consider as a ministry. When you see everything that we do as a church, and in this church, as a ministry. Think about things that you're involved in. Think about other things in this church. Are there any of these that you'd like to lift up in prayer this morning? Anybody? Yes, Rose. Dear Lord, just be with the Sunday School Lord as we're back meeting and just help us to reach people's hearts with you and your life. Yeah. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, also be with uh, the thoughts of Vacation Bible School and people praying and, and Lord, just help us to figure out how we're going to do it and to just be ready to serve you. Yeah. Larry? Heavenly Father, I too just ask for your blessing for our Sunday School uh, classes that we have in, uh, taking place right now. Thank you for the people who are coming and contributing and listening to your word and gaining more insight into how you would want us to live. And I just ask for a new blessing upon that. Amen. Any other ministries or things within Second Baptist Church you want to lift up? Don? Dear Lord, I just thank you and bless you for us coming as a church and able to pray. And continue to bless us on Thursday nights as we pray in our parking lot. Um, we are seeing that the power of prayer is, is so powerful. And just bless, bless it and hope that people can turn up. And if they can't, they can pray at home and we can just get on the right track again after this COVID. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Think outside of Second Baptist Church now to other ministries, uh, ones you may know about. Think about our missionaries that we support at Southern Baptist. Are there any of these ministries that you would like to lead us in prayer for this morning? Let's pray for our schools that, that they stay healthy and our kids can be communicating with each other and socializing with each other in a safe and healthy manner because they need this. They really do need to be with each other. Amen. Thank you for the prayer. Anyone else? Ed? And I just wish a friend of Crema to you, one of our North American missionaries in Alaska, as they are in the middle of their Iditarod sled dog race. And as she has ministered there for years, and there will be people reaching out, and they too are struggling with the COVID virus, and they're doing things differently. So help her and her ministry team and volunteers ministering to the uh, sweaters and the people of Alaska and Nome, Alaska, as they are just right now in the middle of that race. So I lift them up to you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lord, today I lift up the Living Project, which is located in Georgia. <coughs> Lord, you minister to every new cancer patient that is referred to them. Lord, when you hear that from the patients on their website that are so thankful that folks are praying for them, people that they don't know will never know. Lord, we pray and lift that program up and we pray, Lord, that it will continue to touch the lives of those that sometimes think that they don't have Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Last, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not here. Last, uh, last part of the prayer this morning. I want you to be thinking about people who need to know Jesus. Think about individuals that you know. Think about towns, areas, states, countries that God may lay on your heart to pray for this morning. Father, please open our eyes to those whom you want us to tell about your son Jesus. Is there anybody you want to lift up in prayer in that regard? Someone who needs to know Jesus, yes. Our leaders. Yes. They need to 
search our hearts and find the right thing for our people. And put God first. Amen. And that way our country will heal. Amen. Anyone else? Well, Father, as we get ready to go into your word, I pray that you be with Joe and just fill him with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit, Father, that we can hear what you have to say through your wonderful word. And Father, I ask that you would please bless a friend of mine, Ken Heron of Half Crown Media, as they are getting close, dear Lord, to an advanced stage of a, a work they've been going on for years now, a biographical picture, a motion picture about the life of the great uh, missionary Hudson Taylor. That is at the same time an evangelical outreach to, to China. Would you please bless them, Father? It is in the name of your Son, Jesus, that we pray, saying together, Amen. Brother Larry. On behalf of your uh, search committee, I'm pleased that we can bring uh, Brother Joe Twig to preach for us, and he's got a special gift. He's got his wife and mother with him, and I think we're going to get a double blessing with a song and sermon. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, you know, Joe's that guy that usually brings snow, but today he brought sun. So we had to cancel two previous commitments because of snow, but we're happy to have you here today and look forward to your message. Uh, so please welcome Joe. Church, it's important to know your gifts. <laughs> Mine is not singing. I know, I know for years I played music in bands and played guitar and, and everything else and I sang and uh, I'm not a gifted singer. She is. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that because it gives me a chance just to step back, play guitar, and let somebody else have the line. Turn in your copy of Scripture to Titus chapter 2. Um, you don't hear much, many sermons on the book of Titus. But I did a whole series down at the Korean Baptist Church. I did a whole series on Titus. And it's called the, the just basically order. That's what Paul instructed Titus to do, is to... Uh, bring order out of what appeared to be a chaotic uh, situation. He was to appoint elders. And then he made a mention over in chapter 1 about Cretans being um, basically stupid and ignorant. And he said this is a true statement. Now, he's not, he's not insulting anybody. He's just trying to say that without order, well, basically we can all be stupid and ignorant without order. Okay? You with me? Because I know I can. Uh, that's the reason why this, this beautiful lady here uh, it stays so close to me so she can bring me in sometimes. Hey, watch it, pal. Anyway. Titus chapter 2, starting at verse 1. But as for you, speak things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. <clears throat> Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded. In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing integrity reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say to you. <clears throat> when I developed this sermon, I stepped back and I looked at my upbringing, being a, a rural country boy from West Virginia. We always had a garden at 
from, from the time I was this big and can remember, we always had a garden. Sometimes we had five or six. <laughs> we grew a quarter acre of potatoes one time and we spent a week plowing out potatoes and, and storing them up for the winter. Man, that was a job. <laughs> but it was worth it because you could, you could have that, that stability knowing that you had food stored up for the winter. But one thing you never counted on, you never cultivated them, you never sowed them, but you could always count on weeds. Anybody's ever grown a garden, whether it be it flowers or vegetables, you got to contend with weeds, don't you? Okay? It's difficult to raise crops because you've got the rain or the lack of it. it, it, it Kenny knows from down there in eastern North Carolina, sometimes the rains can last for a month and a half in the spring, correct? That's what we just came off of. One of the wettest falls and winter we've ever had. Uh, we didn't go a week to where we didn't see two or three days of rain. And it was just insane, the, the amount of rain that we had. Of course, along about July or August, <clears throat> we're going to experience the lack of rain. See, all that factors into growing a good crop. Cooler temperatures can uh, take their toll on, on uh, young vegetables trying to germinate. Uh, I helped mom last year plant uh, some green beans. And the dry weather and the cool weather, just the first batch just didn't come up. They come up real spotty. So we replanted some. And it's just, you name it, things can go wrong. Critters even play a, 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 an important uh, part of that element. If you plant sweet corn, you better do something about the raccoons because they're going to get in on it. Okay, anybody that's ever planted sweet corn knows that raccoon, raccoons love it. Okay. Groundhogs love anything that's in the ground, so they're going to dig around, so they're, they're, they're an important factor. But see, that factor of weeds always plays back in there. You never planted them, you didn't cultivate them, and you don't care for them. They just show up. Now what I'm about to say is going to sound real insensitive, and I want you to bear with me. But there's a lot of weeds in society today. Okay? These weeds can undermine a family. These weeds can undermine a church. And they can undermine a community. Now, I want you to understand, I'm not pointing the finger at any certain group. I'm just trying to tell you that the weed is a mentality versus a person. But as the church, which is a great big family of families, we should be about the harvest and trying to safeguard against the weeds. Deuteronomy 6 uh, verses 4 through 9 says that a Hebrew man was to teach his children about the Lord at all times. The Lord should be on every heart and mind and even the doorposts of your house. So what if we use this principle for the church? Uh, you with me? What if you dedicated your home to the Lord? What if you said, this is... This is where Joe and Mary resides, but the Lord owns it. <clears throat> How would your family and ultimately the church fare if we allowed God to be our focus rather than every other little thing that comes down the pike? We're going to see here what Paul tells Titus here. There's the first, the first element here is going to be the requirements. 
Titus is required to speak proper things for sound doctrine. Sound things look like uh, it, it, advice can be rejected, but this is a command. It, a command cannot be rejected. It has to be disobeyed if it's not carried out. You with me? BC, what was it like there well, in the military? If you didn't obey what the, what the first sergeant told you, you paid the price, didn't you? There's a price for disobedience. <clears throat> guess, guess what? It's going to start with the older men. If you're an older man, raise your hand. Come on, come on, raise them up. It starts with us. We're the lead off batters, folks. God's not requiring you to, to hit a home run. He just wants you to get on base. Okay? We are to exhort the young men. <clears throat> the word exhort actually means to advise, to warn, and to caution. We're to be the, 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 the caution light for the church. See here, the older women are to admonish the younger women. This word, admonish, means to instruct or direct. Do you see that both of them are a hands-on project? We have to become personally involved with the group that we're working with. Now, although that's not directly said, it is implied that the younger men and the younger women must apply what they learn from the elder members of the church in order to uh, improve their personal lives. All right? I want you to see the responsibilities that are here next. The older men are to advise the younger men to live a godly life by modeling their own lives. Do you, see, do you see what the picture here is? They're going to learn by example. Uh, guys, we might have to do what we did in the military. We might have to practice it over and over and over and over again so they understand. We might have to do it. Okay? They might have to see us fail a time or two. You, you with me? They might have to see us fail a time or two in order to know how to get back up, brush ourselves off, and move forward again. All right? I want you to see here, sober and temperate means the same thing here. It's the same definition. It's an unhindered, unimpaired focus for the things of God. Reverent means not only holy in the church. You get that? It's not just a church thing. We need to be reverent outside there too. And anybody that's ever been to North Carolina to Jacksonville has drove, driven up and down Western Boulevard. <laughs> if you look at Kenny, Kenny will, will shake his head. It can be nerve-wracking, can it? <laughs> Okay, my wife says to me all the time, why do you fuss at those people coming down Western Boulevard? You know they can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's that wise counsel. That's why I keep her close, guys. She's my, she's my second Holy Spirit. But she's there in the flesh, and she can give me a shot in the arm that easy, <laughs> you know. But reverent means that we need to be holy in all of our dealings. Not just the ones here in the church. Right? And it mentions being sound in the faith. Sound in faith is your theology. And it has to be on solid ground. In every aspect, in all that you can, point them back to the Bible. You point those young men back to Scripture to make sure that they're well grounded. Now, what should you model? 
All you got to do is go over to Galatians chapter 5. And you'll see a, a, a group of, a group of uh, attributes, is, is what I'll refer to this morning. Attributes. But it's called the fruit of the Spirit. That's what we need to be modeling in front of these younger men. Uh, older guys, you with me? <clears throat> we need to be modeling that in our lives so they see what it looks like. And then they can aspire to that themselves. Alright? Older women are to, be, are to model attributes as well for the younger women to learn. They are to be reverent in and out of church as well. Do not slander others. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen guys that are as guilty as this is what is accusing women of being. I've seen guys that are as guilty of it too. Don't slander. This is the root of gossip. Slander is the root of gossip. I want you to see here, thirdly, they're not under the influence of unholy spirits. These spirits are what comes out of a bottle or out of a pipe. You know, I've had Christians that say, well, well you know, since the Bible talks about you not, not drinking, said so maybe I can smoke pot. <laughs> no. 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 You open the door to unholy spirits that way. Leave it alone. <clears throat> I want you to see here that they're also to reject poor lesson material. And they're to choose good things to teach. My wife taught my girls, our girls, how to cook. At least they knew how to cook some basic things. <laughs> now whether they do it today or not is up to them. But they were taught. They were taught how to keep a clean home. I know because we used to have to ground them because their rooms wasn't up to standard. <laughs> but they were taught. <clears throat> but get this. This is what the younger women are to, to learn. The younger women are to learn how to love their husbands and their children. I want you to see here the Greek word that's used here is phileo. It's the same word that Jesus used, uh, that Peter used back to Jesus over in John chapter 20, where it says, it, it said, Peter, do you love me? Jesus said, agape. Do you agape me? And Peter said, no, Lord, you know that I phileo you. Agape is that, is that love of God. The un, uh, uh, undiluted, pure love of God. Peter could not do that because the Holy Spirit hadn't came yet. So the best he could do was love Jesus with that basic family love that we have for one another. That's the best that he could do. And then the third time Jesus said, Peter, do you fillet on me? And he said, Lord, you know that I fillet on you. That's the word that was used here. They're to, they're to love their husbands with that familial love and affection that we have as a family group. <clears throat> Being prudent and cautious is another lesson that they should be learning. Guys, this is one for the younger men too. We need to be te te teaching them prudence and, and caution. Uncorrupted living is still another attribute that's taught. Okay? Now get this. I know this is where the, the feminists would, would want to take me out and burn me at the stake after this. But obedience to your husband does not and did not mean subservient. Guys, if you 
get a plate out there and you get a sandwich and you get the glass with your drink and stuff like this, when you're done with it, rinse it off and put it in the sink, maybe, or, or set it out over there, rinse it off. Don't expect your wife to come and do it. If you're hungry, make a sandwich. You, you get me? She's not your servant. She's not your maid. When you take your, your, your clothes off to get a shower, put them in the hamper. You, you with me? This is 22 years of training here. <laughs> you understand that, guys? That's 22 years of training. <clears throat> All right? But it doesn't mean subservient. It means, it meant and means that you work with him as the head of the home to make the best home possible. Guys, that goes the other way too. We need to work with her to make the best home possible. And in that, God is honored. Now, here's how, here's how a great theologian said it one time. He said, his wife looked at him and said, you're in charge. Which means uh, you're, you're responsible if we go wrong. <laughs> she said, I'm to follow you. If you lead me down the wrong path, God will make you pay. <laughs> but I want you to see here that the younger men have things to learn as well. They are to be sober-minded. Okay, remember what I meant by sober-minded. It's the unhindered, unimpaired focus on the things of God. They should be exhibiting good works. Thrilled my heart to know that Troy's leading the basketball program here. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. That's a great way to share Jesus with a bunch of kids that come in off the street. Great way. I know. I used to run an upward basketball program down in Jacksonville. Uh, it, when I took when I when I was asked to head up the program, we had about 45 or 50 kids from the previous years. When we ended, we were running uh, about uh, close to 200 kids, and we had a, a, a seventh and eighth grade league who ran Friday and Saturday night. Uh, excuse me, we ran on Friday nights. Um, the, the older girls, the fifth through eighth grade, they came in and ran the second game, the first game. The boys ran the second game, the seventh and eighth grade boys. And I'm not talking five, six men apiece. We're seven or eight men on these teams, okay? The coaches had to learn to rotate the way it was supposed to. They had to learn to work together, and it worked. And we'd see 10 or 15 kids come to Christ every year, every season. There'd be 10 or 15 kids come to Christ. Somebody said, out of 200, that ain't very many. Let me tell you something. Jesus would have left heaven for one of them. For just one of them. So we should be, we should be uh, unhindered and unimpaired in our focus on the things of God. The good works should be there. They should be doctrinally sound. Old, older men, we need to be reading this so the younger guys can see it. They need to be taking that to heart and they need to be reading it themselves. Amen. Integrity Reverence and incorruptibility should extend beyond the church into the community. Sound speech is ideas and principles that are basic, excuse me, that are biblically true and sound for living. Our speech should be sound. It should be biblically reverent and not worldly. Now, you, you understand You understand that a lot of people are saying, I can't do that. That that's, it sounds like perfection to me. You know, we're going we're gonna to fall down. But that's what a family does. They get each other back up and they make sure that they're sound again. We learn to brush each other off and we take off again and we move towards the Jesus direction. We're following Jesus. We don't try to get ahead of Him. We don't try to get off the trail. We're following Jesus. All right? I want you to see the rewards here. You're going, to see, you're going to see a church that is foundationally 
<clears throat> sound where sound doctrine is taught. Number two, you're going to see a church where the fruit of the Spirit is exhibited. Now, it's not fruits of the Spirit. It is fruit. One fruit, nine different flavors. That's how I put it. They said, we well, have fruits of the Spirit. There's nine of them. I said, no. It is one fruit, nine flavors. I want you to see that good things are taught as well. We're teaching good things. Because it's all coming from here. I want you to see here the another reward is the church and families will be strengthened. If your home life is strong, biblically sound, your church life is going to be biblically sound. Because we're all going to be pulling in the same direction. Once you see another reward is critics are ashamed to point their fingers and criticize. They're going to be ashamed to do it. You know why? Because they're not going to have anything to say. They're going to be ashamed to try to trump up some things and, and point at you and say, look what they just did. Yeah, look what they just did. Just had a basketball program here on Monday night that, that, that four kids heard the gospel and, and, and walked away with the Bible. Yeah. Detractors will not have a bad thing at all to say. So church, where does this leave us? Number one, you need to become a mentor because that's what this actually is, is referring to. We need to mentor. So you need to be a mentor to a young man or young woman. Yeah, well, I, I know what, I, I hear this all the time, but, but pastor, that's just outside my comfort zone. Well, bless God, maybe God's trying to move you out of that comfort zone and get you to where you're uncomfortable so you can actually be the hands and feet of Christ. Maybe you need to mentor some. Senior adults, pick a younger person to come alongside and guide them in godly living. Teach them, teach them to memorize Scripture. Teach them a love for God's Word. Teach them that we are saved for good works, not because of them. Because there's a lot of people out there that are sitting in the pew Sunday morning that say, you know, I, I, I'm going to heaven because I did this and that and the other. No, you're not. You're going to heaven because it was a free gift of God. <laughs> You should be serving Jesus because you are saved. Amen. Younger adults, if you're a younger adult, raise your hand. Um, you, need to, you need to be picking somebody younger than you to mentor and to guide and direct. Okay? Just because just because it talks about older the older men and the older women doing these things doesn't mean that you're off the hook. You should be picking younger folks to guide and direct yourself. Teach them the same things you're being taught. To, to read God's Word, to memorize God's Word, to do good works because of our salvation. Because all this does it strengthens our church. It strengthens our homes. And it strengthens our community. I shared in my interview with Larry and the, the committee that it breaks my heart to see Cumberland the way it is nowadays. When I was a little kid, we used to love to come over here to Christmas shop. I remember going down there where GB's was down here. And 
walk along where at Murphy's was. That was my favorite spot. Watch it. Look at the, all the Christmas decorations up in the Murphy's windows. Man, that was something. See, Murphy's had an escalator. And man, that was unheard of to me. I didn't even know what that was. I know I liked riding it, though. <laughs> I didn't know where it went, but I just liked riding it. All that's gone now. Used to be a powerhouse of industry. Now prison's the main industry now. And those prisons is where they're depositing the society's weeds. We can make a difference by teaching our young people to do what they need to do. Young people, you teach the ones below you, the, the, ones, the, the ones coming up behind you. You can teach them what you've been taught. And all that does is just strengthen our community. We could go out there and win Cumberland back for Christ. Because when the community sees this, guess what? They're going to want what we have. They are going to want what we have. And guess what? All that does is swing wide the gospel door. And we can share. Well, look, it's not, it's not anything that I did. It's everything that Jesus did for me. He did this for me. But guess what? It can only happen if you know Jesus yourself. I'm going to tell you the ABCs of the gospel. You ready? This is, this is an older guy teaching some younger guys. And it might be an older guy teaching another older guy. Okay? You with me? A. Admit that you are a sinner in need of saving. There's nobody out here that can claim perfection. The only perfect person on the face of the earth was crucified on a hill outside of Jerusalem. And for, and for, for three hours of darkness took care of my sin debt that I owed. And I needed to be saved by Him. Okay? That's B. You need to believe that Jesus is the only one who can save you. And see, you need to confess your sin to Him and trust that He forgives you completely, fully, and without any error. Okay? He is the only one that can do that. And guess what, church? That's how weeds become winners. I, I heard that, that you know, in, in a race, they, they give a, a prize to the one who crosses the finish line first. In salvation, everybody gets that when they cross that finish line. Every, Jesus is waiting to meet every believer and says, welcome home, well done, good and faithful servant. We might come across at different times, but we all finish that race. Heaven is where we're, we're headed. We need to tell that to our community. All right. I'm going to pray for us. And uh, if, you, if, you, this, if you realize today that you need to trust Jesus for the first time, uh, you can talk to me after the service. You can talk to Pastor Kenny. He'll be around here for a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that Brother Larry would, would, would try to uh, would be willing to share Jesus with you. Okay? He could tell you what it would take to get saved. Alright? But I'm going to pray for us and then I'm going to go ahead and finish up. Lord, we thank you that you brought us all together here today. I thank you, Lord, for my friends here in Cumberland. I thank you for the wonderful opportunities that lay ahead for my brothers and sisters here. I, I, I just look forward to the the opportunity to maybe partner with them and help them in these, these new and exciting days ahead. So Lord, we just give all this time to You. And Lord, I pray for that one that might be ready to trust You for the first time. Lord, give them the courage to step up and speak up, Lord. And whoever they speak to, Lord, give Your servant the, the, 
the courage and the love to share that, that undying love that you have for us with them. So Lord, as we can prepare to depart, I pray that your spirit would rest on my friends, that you would guide and direct their steps and help us all, Lord, to, to love you just a, a bit more each and every day, Lord. And may this lost world see it. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff, for the message. Hymn number 132, There is Power in the Blood. Would you please stand and join me in singing this? 132, There is Power in the Blood.